Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. So, as you might know, I'm using elementary OS every day, but that doesn't mean I can't take a look at other desktop environments. I haven't used KDE since the KDE 4 days, when I enjoyed its polished look but could not get past the sheer complexity exposed through the menus. Since then, KDE has matured a lot and I'd like to revisit it by switching all my workflow to KDE for a month. During this time, I'll make videos about how it works, what I like and dislike about it, and the problems I've encountered. Obviously, I'll keep covering elementary OS and general Linux news when something pops up, that doesn't mean I'm switching away from elementary OS, don't panic. The experiment. I'll be using KDE Neon to try and get as close as pure KDE as possible. I won't be reviewing the destroy in itself, purely the Plasma desktop environments and the KDE applications. I will be running this on my Core i5 laptop with 8GB of RAM and a GDX 1050 Ti. I updated everything to the latest version and it's running fully installed on an SSD. I'll be using KDE only for every of the videos in this series, from sound recording to video capture to video editing, everything will be ran on KDE Neon for those videos. First impressions. When you open the KDE desktop, it looks crisp and clean. It's reminiscent of Windows with the use of a bottom bar with a menu on the left and indicators on the right. The desktop itself is very clean, with no extra icons, panels or junk floating around. Everything appears softly, smoothly, with nice animations, which are a bit too slow to my taste by default. It seems like the system is taking just a little bit too long to display the things I clicked on or to make elements disappear. Apart from the bottom bar, you also get a button up top, which shows options to add panels and configure your desktop. The mouse cursor theme is pleasing to the eye, with icons bouncing when starting applications. It generally feels nice and welcoming. The bottom bar. It's pretty simple, really, very similar to what you'd get on Windows. A main menu, a task manager, and indicators, complete with a clock. At the end of the bar, you get a button, similar to the one up top, which allows you to customize the height, width, and settings of the bottom bar. Its interface is a bit convoluted, but allows you to change any parameter. The menu. The KDE menu is a delight to use. It's divided into five main categories. Favorites, which shows your favorite apps, Applications, which opens an application list sorted by categories, and Computer, which shows some system apps and your favorite places on your file system. The menu is completed by a History tab and a Leave tab, which offers options to lock the session, log out, shut down, reboot or suspend the computer. Obviously, it has search baked in right from the start and it works perfectly. Just tap the super key and start typing and you'll get everything from apps to files to open windows, browser tabs, bookmarks, calculations. It's a very handy feature I'd love to see in elementary OS. You can configure that menu by right clicking on it and this is where the power of KDE starts to show. You can change the icon, the keyboard shortcuts and select which tabs you want to show on the menu and their order complete with other options, such as turning off the tab switching when the mouse hovers over it. This menu is, in my opinion, the best I've used on any system. Very clear, very simple, and very powerful. The Task Manager. Nothing very special here by default. You'll see all your open windows, complete with a preview of the window on hover, which was not very legible on my system, the miniatures being very pixelated. Here again, you can configure the Task Manager by right-clicking on any open task. You can change keyboard shortcuts, number of task rows, choose to group applications or not, mark the apps that play audio and select what applications you want to see here from any desktop, any activity or only the minimized applications. The indicators. By default, there are a lot of indicators. Clipboard, Plasma Browser Integration, Bluetooth, Internet Connection, Battery if you're on a laptop, Volts, which seems to be an encryption feature, Sound, and a little arrow which displays even more, notifications, updates, printers, keyboard, KDE Connect, and a device notifier. This is a lot to show a user, but each of these is useful in its own right. If some of these bother you, a right click on the little arrow allows you to select which indicator you'd like to see. I'd have gone for a cleaner default, but that's just me. Each indicator is packed full of information. For example, the clipboard allows you to search directly from the indicator, or the sound indicator shows the main volume for each audio peripheral, each capture device, as well as for each application. They are very well done and very handy. Widgets KDE's desktop, Plasma, uses widgets for everything. If you remember Mac OS X's widgets or Windows desktop gadgets, they are the same thing except you can place them wherever you want and combine them. A panel, like the bottom bar, is a widget and you can add widgets to it. For example, I can create a top panel which will host the menu bar just like on Mac OS X, or a side panel for system monitoring. To access the widgets, you click on the top button and select Add Widgets, then simply drag the desired one onto the desktop. 
Some are not very descriptive, but once you've added them and resized them to the desired size, you can pretty much do anything you want. Plasma Activities KDE supports virtual desktops, but by default there is only one. You can change that in the settings, but KDE offers you another way to do things. Activities These allow you to change desktop behavior and look based on which activity you're using. For example, I can add certain widgets on a specific activity, which won't show up on the other activities. This allows you to completely personalize the way your desktop behaves, depending on what you're doing. If you're working, you could get a quick access to a console, CPU load indicators, and a handy shortcut. While on your personal activity, you could get a media player, a specific web page open, and quick access to any application. It's handily hidden by default to not confuse users, but once you're familiar with KDE, I can see this becoming a very useful feature. Look and feel. The default theme for the desktop looks very pretty, with smooth gradients on panels and subtle transparency. Animations are smooth and fluid, and really give a sense of what is happening when you click on something. The only thing that bothered me a bit was that opening indicators and menus felt disconnected from the main panel somehow, like they were different components layered on top of the main panel. On elementary OS, for example, you can see where the menu originates from, and it stays connected to the panel by a little arrow pointing at what you've clicked. It's a very minor thing, and it didn't bother me anymore after using the desktop for a few minutes. Generally, the KDE desktop default looks very nice, very professional, and very modern. This first contact with KDE has been refreshing. You can sense the configure everything philosophy permeating everywhere, and you know that by right-clicking something, you'll get tons of options to change its behavior. The activities concept is pretty awesome as well, and the desktop has been very stable and very efficient. The defaults are sane and easy to understand, even though they went a bit overboard with system indicators. All in all, the default experience is a welcoming one, hiding its complexity for those who would not need it. So that's it for this first part of my uh, KDE experience. Uh, stay tuned for the next video, we'll keep exploring KDE, taking a tour of the default applications, the configuration settings, uh, that might take a few videos to sort out, theme customization, and even more. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye.